close your eyes. And I'm very thankful. I have a bill of sale for the slaves. I have them. What you're firing at? I love LA. Might have been your last chance. I insist. What did you say? A man is supposed to take care of his family. You gonna stay for supper? any maids looking? Becoming more human all the time. Hi, Gina. Hi, Melissa. <laughs> Are you excited? Yeah, ready, ready to, to tell everybody my story. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all ready to listen. All right, well, I will be formal with you, even though we're good friends, and I'm happy to be talking yeah. to you. So I'm very happy to be sitting here with Gina D. DeMonico. D. DeMonico. And we got it. We almost. We got it close. Oh, almost. <laughs> new last name, new life. Um, and you are a cons costume concept artist. Yes. So tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Um, I am a costume concept artist. Um, it's a, I'm a digital artist. Um, and what I do is, is I work on film and TV conceptualizing with the designer what all the costumes are going to look like in the film and it's always or tv and and it's always for um clothes that have to be made uh versus purchased um like superhero shows or set in the future or set in the past and uh um they have to make make them and make doubles and triples and stunt you know doubles and and so it's it's not uh, my art is never for anything that is um that can be purchased so, so they need artists to communicate what costumes are going to look like 
Now, when you say make it, it's not necessarily exclusively making it on a sewing machine. There's some sculptor, sculpt, sculpting happening too, right? Yes, yes. Uh, most of it is sewing machines that are the shows that I work on, and then certain pieces are um, have to be made by special effects, like all the, the armor and pieces that light up and uh, stuff like that has to be done by special effects. And so your designs communicate not just to the people who are sewing together the costumes, but also the special effects people, the people who have to put lights or tears or texture or anything else. Exactly. exactly. So m I work with a designer and we come up with what we think are, are the best, say, five ideas for the certain character. And... Um, after we come up with those, she gives it to the producer and the director or the showrunner, whoever she thinks is the next level of approvals. And it comes back to us with a couple choices. And we, then we move forward with those choices. Um, once we get to a final, which could take two weeks to six months, then that goes to the workroom. And so, and the dyers and special effects and everybody now, it's, a, it's my drawings are a communication tool to get the costume made and ready um, to shoot, ready for set. And you mentioned superheroes as some of the costumes that you design and you have been working on some concept art for a little show yes. called The Boys, right? Yes, I'm the concept artist for the boys, and I'm so proud. And that we, I, the first season was like uh, three years ago, and so the some illustrations that I'll be showing uh, was work I did, a, you know, three years ago, and it's it's like it's, you know, by the time you do all the work and it gets to screen, it it you forget like all the stories, but um, but yeah, so I did the boys first, second, and uh, first and second season. And um, you did Queen Maeve. Yes. And so there's some different pieces to the process, right? You had yes. the, the different sort of ideas about the, co the costume that you would share back and forth. Tell us a little bit about the process for Queen Maeve. Okay, so when, when I start on a character, the designer and I sit and we discuss um, who the character is. And someone has usually done all the research for us um, in, in the office. And we research, for example, for Queen Maeve, what she looked like in all the comics. Um, we talked about how to transition to a real body from what's on her in the comics. Um, how we want to update the costume if it needs updating. Uh, and what I do is, and then if there's a cast member, I'll put the cast member's face on, on, on the drawing. So when I start, I start in all, um, gray values because it's easier to see good design if you just use grays, um, cause color can be really distracting. So we start with rows of just concepts in all gray. And then we move on to sample uh, colors. Once, once we hone down, now we sometimes I'll do like 20 illustrations, 20, 30, 40 illustrations, and I'll just go and go and go and just keep using the inspiration that I've been given and understanding what the designer wants. And I'll, I'll create just rows of concepts that are just, each one is just a little different from the next. Always referring to uh, all the research material and what the designer, the track the designer wants to stay on. So um, sometimes I'll do, for Queen Maeve, I probably did 40. And then oh, wow. the, those 40, you know, my, my, the designer I'm working for, for, for the boys is uh, Laura Jean Chan, and she's fabulous. And she would then take it down to 10. And then we go down to five. And then usually in those final five, we start then playing with color. Where does the color go? What color um, is appropriate for this character? They start researching fabrics and then it goes to the producer and director and, and, and we, get, we get it down again to the next level down. And so as, we, as the weeks go on, 
we hone it down to the to the final to the final um, illustration. How often does how the actor looks how do, how often does that influence the actual costume itself? How the actor looks? Yeah, in terms of hair color or um, you know maybe body type or anything like that. You, Sometimes a concept will be done and then it's cast. And sometimes we have to redo the drawing a little bit because of the proportions of the actor. Mm -hmm. and, and we lose a lot of real estate sometimes. So like I'll have all sorts of seam lines between, between in the waistline. And if the actor ends up being sh like short-waisted, we have to redesign, even though it's all been approved, we have to redesign what's going on between in that spot. So what happens is the actor will come in and we will put them in a bodysuit. And what I do is in the first fitting, I draw all the design lines on the bodysuit on the actor and we can see, and we're using a, an, an, in my drawing. So we've got my drawing up and then the actor's in front of me and I'm drawing on them and we're trying to match up what I've created in the concept art to what's the real estate that's happening on their body. And in, in the first fitting process, we, we most of the time have to make design changes and then pray, you know, it's already been approved, but pray that it doesn't change really the way the design looks. And sometimes the actor will have parts of their body that are, they love and want to show and that they absolutely want to hide you know, or, you know, and so sometimes some, there's some design nudges around, around that too. Um, but in the, in the first fitting, it's, it's the most fun where they get into the bodysuit and we see like what really, how this is all going to line up. Do they kind of become uh, the character a little bit? Yeah. Oh, they, they get really excited. They get really yeah. excited. And, and as, as, as we move on in the, in the fittings, like we've about one fitting a week and then special effects start arriving with all the hard pieces and everything's molded and the diadems and and it, through each fitting we get closer and closer to um to the final which and then the, the actor gets super excited uh we're looking here at for example my illustration is on the is on the upper right and the people who are molding queen maeve's corset are referring to the illustration and and creating the mold the the um the mold for for her her corset um so like i said the the concept art is is it is 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 a language that everybody follows to get the costume made um and so as an artist i really can't I have rules. I have strict rules I have to follow. Oh. Like arms can never cross the front of the body. Like so so I'm creating art but kind of I'm creating art that really has to be clear. So I have to follow pose rules in terms of being able to see usually my poses aren't both open arms because then you can't see the side of the arm. Mm -hmm. So I have to make sure that all the workrooms and special effects and everybody can see everything about the costume um all angles of the costume and if i don't show it i have to then draw a side view and a back view so it sounds to me like what you're saying is that you are doing a whole lot of drawing and a whole lot of revising yes. over and over again to get the costumes yes, yes. And, <laughs> and yes how did you get <laughs> yeah like all like six months later i'm revising a, a uh, concept, uh, you know, for a character. Um, yeah, it never stops. It, it doesn't stop. Even, even it, yeah. And you do even it all digital. End, changes. All digital. All digital. But you haven't always been all digital. You used to have to make all of those revisions on pen and paper, right? Yes. You know, <laughs> though, when, when there wasn't the kind of freedom we have now with digital art, like I can change um, a green costume to a blue costume in two seconds, right? Yeah. Uh, and th in the old days, if the designer wanted to see a different color, it would take me at least a solid day to redraw the whole thing and change the color. 
right? I have to start with like redrawing likenesses. I was drawing like teeny little likenesses of actors perfectly. And then if the designer was like, I don't like red, I want to go blue. Oh. Okay, I'll have it in a day or two. And, and uh, so I think in those days, we just got it right the first time or wrong, you know? <laughs> <laughs> It was just like, it's red. We're going to keep it red. You know, this is what's that guy's favorite color? Is it blue? Yeah. Make it blue. <laughs> yeah. We didn't make the changes we make now. There's it's, it's really different. It's, it, it's just, it, it, and, and we also didn't have, we weren't doing like superhero stuff like we're doing now and all these incredible, what with with special effects now. I mean, the freedom we have now is is so much different in terms of the films that are being made and the visually what's going on with film and tv but so when you was, started and you were doing pen and paper and you were sort of focusing you know we didn't have this possibility about superheroes and all of the mm -hmm. special effects we had back then mm -hmm. um when you started your career what were you using to communicate oh, your designs <laughs> I was using a light board and um, bristle paper and gouache and pencils and markers. Yeah, and so when I go to work, I really prayed they would keep me for at least a week because the unload and the setup was crazy. And it was, yeah. it, I, we're looking now at my, at my old, one of my old jobs, this was Godzilla oh. and, um, uh, one of my, this is probably one of my last jobs in paper, uh, using paper and a light board, but, um, it was quite a, it was quite messy and we couldn't email anything. And How did you get the designs? You would, you would send a messenger, a courier? Oh, I'd, I'd go into the office and work with the designer. And so she would show me pieces of tear sheets. It was all tear sheets of ideas and, uh, nothing digital at all or nothing on email or anything like that and and then when we wanted to email if we had to we would have to take all these drawings which were 11 by 17 and take them to kinko's <laughs> and we'd we'd have scans made and the skin tone would always come out yellow and the yeah. colors were all completely off all the time so all my old digital all my old artwork from those days if i don't have the originals i have scans that and these ones aren't bad yeah uh oh i just the yeah so i can um, well i can see anthony hopkins and john looks like john malkovich yes Am john right? malkovich yeah yeah and uh these were painted on bristol paper and um i must have gone to kinko's and adjusted the color on these until the poor guy who works at kinko's went crazy because <laughs> and this is this one's the hateful eight um which is, uh, yeah, I one of the also the last shows I did with paint when I came back. Um, it was it was hard. It was hard. You had one shot, and uh, communicating the artwork through all the different departments had to be the artwork had to be scanned and then emailed, and it was it was not an easy task. It just wasn't, and it wasn't. I uh, just. Just thinking about those days, just now that I have my Cintiq and it's all digital, it's, I can't even believe, feels like, you know, when we were driving cars, we had to crank our windows down. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and then a button was like, oh. um, it's much easier now. Yeah. So you were drawing pen and paper and you were working on The Hateful Eight and these other fantastic movies. Mm -hmm. And then you had your daughter and you left the workforce I did and you said goodbye to the wonderful costume design and you were a stay-at-home mom how was yes. that to leave the workforce and stay home with your kids right when I um right when I left well I realized I I couldn't be the mother that I wanted to be and give my kids the time that they needed and being a working mom it just wasn't if if I had been if it was digital then I may have been able to do it because I potentially could have done it from home but in those days you had to be in the office you had to be right next to the designer and um 
it was it was hard in the beginning because I was worried about losing touch and losing ground. And I think it had a little bit to do with my ego, you know, that I wasn't uh, a professional anymore, that I was going to be a stay at home mom. And so I had a little bit of panic. And then one designer said to me, you have all the time in the world to work, but your kids are only, you're only gonna raise your kids for this little window of time. So don't worry about it. And yeah. after she said that to me, it was like, oh my God, she's so right. And it just hit home. And I thought, that's it. I'm just going to raise my kids because I had three daughters. It wasn't like one, you know, yeah. and I was going to like work this out. I had three and it was full time. And so, and, it, and the mom I wanted to be was the one that was home cooking and making cookies and helping them with their homework. And, and that's who I wanted to be. So I did that for probably 12 or 13 years. Wow. Um, and while I was gone, well, while I was, I wasn't gone, I was there. While yeah. I was being a mom, <laughs> um, I, I did, like my creativity didn't stop. I still wanted to be drawing and I still wanted to be. So what I would do is I would craft with the girls all the time, it would be crazy crafting. And um, I also tried to start a little business, a home business, where I was making lunch cards for their lunch boxes. Aww. And and so I do the art, art, these artistic lunch cards and and uh, create lines. And I thought they, they, my kids loved them so much. I thought, well, maybe I'll start that business. And I tried, but it was it's just too much. And that's when I realized. That's when the first time I saw Photoshop because I was doing these illustrations and then I had to hire someone to put the words on. Oh. And that was my first introduction to what is this Photoshop thing? Oh my God. It's like so hard because I saw, <laughs> you know, the person who, who I hired, I saw them doing it and I thought, oh my God, that's crazy. That's just that's way beyond, I'll never be able to figure out how to do that. And yeah. now it's like just words on, word in Photoshop, words, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> but, um, so I was creative with the girls the whole time I was gone. Yeah. It was, it was fun. And then you decided to go back to the workforce. Well, and kind things of. things had changed. Yeah, so I got a divorce, which, uh, changed my whole world and and um I didn't have any support or help or anything like that so I had to go back into the worst workforce and I thought well okay <laughs> okay I can do this you know I'll just make all my calls and go back in and luckily um the Costume Designers Guild is a union that very much supports their members. And so the Costume Designers Guild has costume designers, costume design assistants, and concept artists. So those are the three categories in the guild. And so when I let them know I was coming back, uh, I spoke to the president, Sal Perez, and he explained you know, he talked to me about how, how to come back and what I needed to do. And first one was volunteer and be social to be seen. And I did that and I got hired for this one job. And I had also heard about this whole digital thing. Yeah. That was, that was kind of taking over, but not to worry. <laughs> 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 that Photoshop thing you saw earlier. Oh, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but I remember every, kind of everybody that was a little bit older in the guild was like, don't worry about it. Pen and, pa you know, the paper thing's still, you know, you're fine. Like, it'll, you'll be, still be able to work. I'm like, okay. And I remember having discussions like, is this real? Like, is, is, are we really doing this? Or is this kind of like one of those phases that everybody kind of gets yeah. over? And they're like, yeah, you'll be fine. We, it's probably just a phase. Yeah. <laughs> And um, so I went to my first job back and I brought all my stuff and yeah. um, some, the designer was fine with it. Of course, she knew exactly that I, she knew what was going on with the industry with digital, you know, wave and, but she was okay with, with me 
drawing. And so she was fine. And I'll, oh God, I was so uncomfortable because I knew something was wrong. I mean, I yeah. just knew the whole thing was wrong, that I was a dinosaur. And um, some people came in and said, is that a light box with paper? Oh, no. And I said, yeah. Oh, no. And they start, okay. <sighs> and they started <laughs> laughing. Oh, Gina. Now they weren't, I don't know, they weren't laughing at me but they were laughing they were still it wasn't like cruel but it was it was one of those moments where I died I absolutely died Mm -hmm. and 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 I don't I'm not mad at them because it changed everything for me I mean um I knew that I had to figure out what this whole digital thing was and um, so it was one of those defining moments that I'm really happy it happened. And um, I then proceeded to contact the the concept artists that were working. And it, through our guild, I knew exactly who they were. And so I, I contacted them and said, you know, said who I was and that I I just wanted to to talk to them about what this whole thing was. And so what I did was I contacted four or five of them and I went and they were so sweet. Now they're all, I'm now in my late forties, early fifties and they're in their mid twenties. So I, I left the, when I left the industry, it was all women drawing with paper around my age. And when I came back, it was all digital and young, young men. Hmm. So I contacted all of them. And I went and sat with them. I said, I just need to sit with you and see what you're doing. And so I sat with each of them for about an hour or two. And they talked to me about their process and what, what, what this was all about and the tools that they used. And from there, I was, I was terrifying, absolutely terrifying and completely, I thought, no, I can't do this. But I have to say, if I, if, if, I had had any kind of financial support or support. If I didn't have to take care of my children, I don't think I could have done it. It was, it was, I think it's what's incredible about us is if we, if we have to do it, we can, whatever it is. If it's like, "Mm, maybe I'll do it. I don't know. This is uncomfortable. Then it's not going to happen. So if I had been able to be like, I'm scared or I'm uncomfortable, this is hard. Um, I, I couldn't have done it because it's, it's, it was like, oh my God, for, I mean, I'm 50 and this is, what is this stuff? You know, it's like huge, like leap. It was a huge leap. Was it, did you feel isolated in the industry there while you, when you didn't understand the technology? Not isolated. Uh, I just cried a lot. So I don't know quite what that feel is. <laughs> I just remember it was an entire year of crying. So, <laughs> okay. So what I did after I sat with all these guys was I found, I went to every class that I could go to that was digital, right? So, and, and our guild, again, provided us with free classes for all sorts of different things, education. So I went and I found there was this class on developing characters in Photoshop and it wasn't the class I needed, but it was a class. Yeah. And so I met Patrick Rodriguez, who's uh, a previs artist for, uh, he was, I think it was for, he was working for Disney at the time. And I said, this, this, what you're teaching isn't what I need to learn. Can I show you what I need to learn? Like, my end product that I have to, that I have to learn. And would you teach me how to do that? Just that. It's like, I don't, I need to learn how to make Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. Not to learn. I don't want to learn how to cook. Just teach me how to learn Thanksgiving dinner. That's it. Because Photoshop is, is like this Pandora's box of like, you can go from here to here, 20 different ways and they're all right. So it, I just, just get me from here to here one way. And so I started taking private lessons with Patrick. He said yes. And um, I'd sit and I'd cry right, right before my lesson. I 
I'd sit and he'd cry and he'd just wait. I'd be like, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and after a year, I was working. It just, wow. just put in, just put in the time. And I started working before I was ready, which also was terrifying because I wasn't ready. The first job I went on, I forgot my stylist. Oh no. I lived, I lived an hour and a half from the job. So Did they have like, one there for you? No. <laughs> I'll be like, I'll be right back. <laughs> I got, I'm all set up and I've no stylus. So um, it, I also start, so I started working prematurely with digital and I just somehow, it was like, I'd sit down and think, I hope they don't find out that I'm just a fraud. I have oh. no idea what I'm doing. And I made it through each job because I had to. It's like, yeah. you have to, I made it through. Somehow I made it through. And um uh, boy, now I would, I, you can't trade. I, I can't have enough Cintiqs. I just, <laughs> I love them so much. Love them. I'm so excited. The one, the one thing that frustrates me now is that I'm so busy that I don't have time to learn. I want to like learn more, take more classes yeah. and I don't have time, but, but, um, one day, I guess I'll get some, you know, you're always behind, which digi yeah. digital arts, you're always behind. Yeah. So I just have to live with the feeling knowing that I'm just, I don't know if I'll ever be caught up. Yeah. I mean, you always have something to kind of keep moving toward. <sighs> so what's yeah. your workspace like now? Well, during COVID it's, it's, we're home. We are home. Right now we're home. So, so, um, do you have a Cintiq this, at home? I, I have a 32 a 32 a pro 32 at home which also doubles as as a bed <laughs> <laughs> it's huge I love it so much so when I travel with my 16 it feels like a postage stamp but the 16 is <laughs> great but oh my god my pro 32 with with a flex arm is I just I love it I love it. I, you know, like I said in another podcast, I, I've been a, just a, a fanatic for collecting. I love jewelry, gold jewelry. But if you said to me, a Cintiq or, <laughs> or a big piece of fabulous jewelry, I'd be like, oh, I think a Cintiq. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just love them. But they've made my life great because I can work from anywhere during COVID. <clears throat> I've been able to work from home like and you can see my home office here and and my daughters are home also and so they're um sitting I've, I put a little desk in front of mine so they do their homework um with me sometimes which is really nice yeah and uh but but the Cintiq has made it me um I've been able to like travel to Europe and take my Cintiq with me and I work from there so it's given me an incredible freedom and an ability to to take care of my family to earn no matter where I am and and so I'm just the biggest fan ever I think I think I'm Wacom's biggest fan aren't I maybe you, you are you are one our of biggest them, right? fan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. so you left so you you started your career pen and paper mm -hmm. you stepped out of the workforce for more than a decade Mm -hmm. You come back, you spend a year learning Photoshop, learning all of the digital tools you need. And now, Gina, you are you are the costume concept artist for arguably the biggest show on television, The Boys. It's, and deservedly so. It's a great, <laughs> God, it's a great show. And it, it, it's just so well done. So, and I'm so proud. Yes, The Boys... Um, I'm also the concept artist for Titans, Doom Patrol, Stargirl, which is really fun, uh, Black Lightning, and what I'm working on right now is Picard, season two. Oh, yeah. So yeah, you're, you're now at the top of your career. I, it, I can't um, say ascent. that's bad luck, right? I no. Can't, can't, do I have to knock on wood if I say yes? I'll I mean, knock on wood for you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy and I don't have a moment. I don't have a moment to breathe. And I, I'm, 
I love drawing and I, uh, I just, as long as I'm drawing, I'm happy. So, so I'm very happy. Especially, and I grew up as a, um, reading comic books. My brother turned me on to comic books. He was a huge collector. And so I became a collector. And so now to be able to be working on these kind of projects that are superhero characters, it's just so much fun. It's no, it's a dream come true for me. What's it like watching your costumes, the the costumes that have come from your concepts? What is that like to see it just on the TV? You're just watching TV and there it is. You know, I thought it was going to like blow my mind and be super exciting. But the, pro the, the process is so long that you start getting like, yeah, there it is. Yeah, there, you know, there it is again. There it is. It's, it's like from, from first, from drawing, it's, it's about, a th it's like two or three years. So you start getting numb. So I have to say, I wish it was more like, oh, wow, there it is. <laughs> I, it, it's just kind of, it, they, it, you're, it just becomes home. Yeah, there, there, you know, it's not that big splash. So, Do you ever just um, want to reach through the screen and fix something that you see that was bothering you? <laughs> God, no. <laughs> no, no, um, no. I love the fact that I get to draw it and then I hand it off to the next department, which then they make it a reality, the whole thing a reality and make all the necessary changes and they deal with all the problems and all the fitting and all the adjustments and all that kind of thing. I like that I hand it off and then I move on to the next thing. I, I love my department. If I feel like I'm the, this is the most fun is my department, but the next department will be like, no, 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 getting all the fabrics and designing the fabrics. That's the most fun. And no, 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 creating all the armor. That's the most fun. It's like, <laughs> no. Ah. So I, I hand off and I, I do love that I don't have to follow it through all the whole process like the designer you know she's right at conception to getting it on set and, and making sure she's right there when it establishes on set and I couldn't imagine sticking having that attention span to get it all the way across the board like that yeah well Gina we were talking before we went live about how what a positive person you are and how you were saying that you live in the moment um, or you're saying that you try to, to be present as much as possible yes. and that the positivity is really important. So talk a little bit about how, I mean, cause it's a hard time, right? You mentioned we're in COVID. Yes. We're however many months into COVID now, six, eight months into COVID. What are, tell me a little bit about your positivity and, and, how it's helping your work and maybe some areas that um, your positivity is, is getting you through this sort of bigger, tougher time? Um, to be completely honest, I think it, I, I'm really lucky that I was down for three months. And, and then because I'm the first step to the process of costumes, I was able to come back on, I think I started again in May, where the rest of the crew probably started in August. Mm -hmm. So I was on by four months before. So I'm really blessed that I was on earlier while everybody else was still waiting and, and struggling and, you know, dealing with, with, you know, not having the income they needed, you know, to get through those months. So, um, but there's, it's, it's, there's so much good in, in what's happening and it's easy to stay positive for me because I have my kids doing their homework right across from me, which is super cool. I get to work instead of drive. My drive to work is an hour and a half. So yeah. up and back. So it's a three hours that I'd be on the road that I'm not on the road anymore. Um, it, there's all these incredible things that are happening. You know, and I, I go outside for my walk and I see families together you know, riding bikes, dads and moms, and everybody's like out with each other. So I see all the really good stuff that's happening and all the restaurants being outdoors. And I know that has nothing to do with my work, but um, learning how also to work from home for what I do 
is is an incredible plus. We're, we, we started doing Zoom and sharing our screens with the designer. And so the fact that we're able to do it from a distance is also incredible for, I think, digital artists, that we could be anywhere or live anywhere and put full days in. Um, because that's what this tool does for us though. I mean, we don't have to be in the office. We can be remote. We can live wherever, we could potentially live wherever we want. And, and it's a luxury that, that has come with digital arts that I think none of us have really been able to totally take advantage of because the norm was you had to go into the office. Right. Where I think we're all, all of us are finding out we don't really have to. A lot of us don't really have to be in the office to, to do a great job and be productive with these tools. So how are you, I mean, throughout the process, you're doing so many revisions and you're taking mm -hmm. in so much input from other people. How, if you're not in the office, how are you getting kind of those little, not the big meeting bits of feedback, but really, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of across the office, quick, quick chat. How are you getting that information? We start, uh, there's, um, my teammate is Greg Hopwood and he's another incredible concept artist. And he and I start a Zoom at 9.30 in the morning and we invite the designer and we stay on it all day long. Oh, wow. And so she can hop in whenever she wants. And so as we're going, uh, she'll jump in at noon or at 6 p.m. or whenever it works for her and be like, okay, guys, what's, you know, how's it going? And so we share our screens with her and show her where our progress. And she, we talk about it and make adjustments and then she hops off. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like being in the office. We weren't, we just started that. We've been back to work um, a while now and we just started that though this past month because um, we wanted to kind of up our game in terms of communication. Mm -hmm. It was, we were struggling a little bit um, before we started the all day Zoom. Yeah. Um, but, and the all day Zoom is, it comes with, it's a double-edged sword too. Cause you know, it's, it's you step away for a second and no one knows where you are because you know, you've turned everything off and it's, it's okay. It's, but it's been working. It's been yeah. totally working. Yeah. And so that's how we're solving that kind of keeping us on track. The designer making sure we're, we don't go too far off track because we're, you know, located somewhere else. But otherwise, before we were just doing the check-in, she would yeah. check in in the morning and then we check in at night and instead of doing the all day thing. Yeah, it's almost like you miss the interpersonal bits to it. You know, I think the morning check-in is nice, but you miss that mm -hmm. coffee talk and you miss the, yep. it's just that moment, secondy, like little bit that you, that you get to talk to people. Yes, you do, but it kind of can't happen while we're all wearing masks, staying six yeah. feet apart. Yeah. You know, it was, it wasn't going to be, we kind of went through it. And there wasn't going to be an ability for her to come in and sit with us or yeah. come in and stand over our Cintiqs. Um, so we were kind of like, well, you we can't do it anyway. So how, how do we want to do this? And just saving the drive time has been so productive. It's you know? huge, right? Mm -hmm. Especially LA, you know, LA yeah. traffic. Yeah. You know? Well, Gina, I think one of the... One of the things, and this is where I would love to, to leave it, is I would love for you to offer advice to people who are either out of the workforce for the moment, right? There's a lot of people who are out of the workforce mm -hmm. um, and they will get back into it, but offering mm -hmm. some thoughts to, to those people um, or the people who are just starting out and who are just beginning their careers in the creative arts. Um, Will you wrap us up from this, from this interview with some mm. words of wisdom? Um, take all this time to learn like ZBrush. If you, especially if you want to be a concept artist, to learn Photoshop, learn ZBrush, learn all these programs. It's, it, it is t completely the future and you will work if you know them. And so if you have downtime, learn. Don't, don't even, don't waste a minute. Yeah. Learn. 
And, and there's, there's so many ways to, to, to learn, you know, online, there's, you, you don't have to pay for any of it either. Pixelogic and um, all these, all the workshops, all the free workshops online is, it's lynda.com. Mm -hmm. There's, there's a plethora of, of ways to learn digital arts online. Even Wacom has a lot of tons of lessons. Yeah, we do. And we have our weekly podcast too, which you've mm -hmm. been a guest. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> our weekly webinars. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, well, so hmm. go ahead. No, no. I'm just saying, I was going to say, so there's no excuses, but I remember in the beginning, I did have a couple excuses because I should have learned ZBrush for all those three months, <laughs> but I didn't, but I've got three kids. <laughs> and ZBrush is a really hard program. You got to baby step, take so baby hard. steps with that one. But it's a big one. It's a big one that it's a, yeah, the interface is, is rough, but that's one that if you can master, it's, that one's a good one for being able to work. Oh yeah. You could work in mm -hmm. most any, you could work in game design. If you have ZBrush, mm -hmm. you could work in product design. Mm -hmm. It's a very um, important program to a lot really of important. artists. Mm -hmm. That and Photoshop, I think are two biggest ones. Yeah. Well, Gina, yeah. I miss you because I normally oh, see you in person sorry. and you always give hugs. You always say, I am a hugging person. I give <laughs> Whether hugs. Whether you like it or not. Whether oh. you like it. <laughs> yes, Comic-Con. We, we, it's, it's so sad. We don't get to go to all the conventions. Yes. So yes. Fun. Hopefully we'll get through this soon and we we'll back on track. We will. And we'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks, Gina. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Mm-hmm.